is over. We're here to honor a very special gentleman who epitomizes that statement of Lombardi. I don't like to read things, but I'm going to because I don't want to leave something out of the information which was sent to me regarding Darrell Green. He's anchored the Redskin defense, as you're well aware, for 14 seasons. He holds a Redskin record of 43 interceptions. He's been to four Super Bowls, five Pro Bowls. He is the only, only one, or only two, ple two players in Redskin history have played in more games than this gentleman. And to show you something about his work ethic, in 200 of the 202 non-strike games since 1983, this gentleman has been there. That's very important. But what I'm about to tell you is even more so, I think. In Washington, D.C. community, he has established the Darrell Green Youth Foundation to give disadvantaged youngsters the technical, educational, and moral help and assistance to help them further develop themselves into the leaders that we're going to come to know in the future. I thought this was also very moving. Through two learning centers, his foundation provides classroom programs as well as food, clothing, and financial assistance to more than 70 local youth and their families. Equally important. He's a local vice president of the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. He devotes a great deal of time to the Big Brothers Big Sisters Foundation and the city's homeless, and it continues. He has a golf tournament which provides funds to the Hope Springs Farm, which provides care for orphans, orphans foster children, and the underprivileged all over that community. And believe me, we could go on and on. This is a distinct pleasure, and Terry, if you would come forward with me at this time, we'd like to present this award to Darrell, please. I'm asking Terry to come up here because each of the gentlemen who have stepped forward have talked about what their families have meant to them. This is the greatest asset I've ever had. She is my hero. Darrell. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm super honored. Um, you know, I really would just love to just hide. And, and I say that because I, I really, I really want to give Jesus the glory. <laughs> Folks, Football is great, and all that we do in this world. But people need to know about Jesus Christ. If you're out there and you're looking and you said, man, that Daryl Green, number 28, is Jesus Christ and him crucified. Many of us, many of you out here, many who will see this or hear this, are lost. People are lost and they're dying every day and it doesn't mean a thing to us. And many of us will come and we'll recognize as football players. People are dying every day. And I don't mean just physical death. But people are separated. Many of you are separated from Jesus Christ. And you will never know him. Some people will be eternally separated from God. God has chosen to allow me to play a game called foot. It's a game. I did it in the street as a little boy. But now it's one of the biggest things in the world as far as man is concerned. And to be able to take that little kid's game, the foolish things of this world, and glorify Jesus Christ, that's what it's all about. 
That's the bottom line. And I don't want to receive honor and glory to me. I thank God. I'm not doing, I'm, I'm, I'm not doing anything. There's still people in my family and people in our streets and in our neighborhoods who need to know Jesus Christ. And we as God's people, we need to stand up. And let me say, everything begins, they say that a man who has character and exemplifies character on the field, off the field, and in the community, it first starts with the cross. I recognize that though the world, I was a, I'm a good kid, well, I, I'm 37 next month, I never drank a beer in my life, smoked cigarettes, did drugs. Among, when we judge ourselves by ourselves, that's, that's an A. And when I came to know Jesus Christ and recognize that when I judge myself by ourselves, man, I'm lost. And I recognized in college that I was separated from the Lord, that I danced to my own music and to the music of the world. And I asked Jesus Christ, I said, Lord, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Forgive me. The people in the book of Acts, the Bible says that they realized that they'd killed Jesus Christ, they crucified him. And the Bible said they were cut in their hearts, and they said, I'm sorry. Can you imagine? You realize today that you've done your own thing, and, and God really is real. Jesus Christ really did come from heaven, lived and suffered and died at your hands. And the Father did raise him from the dead, and he's going to have the last word. Well, I was there. I asked Jesus to come into my life. So how can you say he's got character in his home and on the field? It starts at the cross. But after it goes from the cross, you have to be disciples. I have to know how to walk this walk. I have a friend who's here. Pastor Brett Fuller right here. Somebody has to help you, teach you how to live this life. So many of you are businessmen. Well, I'm a businessman, I'm a football player. And sometimes we have opportunities to go to different cities and play. I'm a free agent right now. And to say this, I lose all my bargaining power, if you would. But God told me to stay in Washington, D.C. He told me years ago, and it kind of made, could have made millions of dollars years ago. God told me to stay in Washington, D.C. As a disciple, the Bible says that the, that the sons of God are those who are led by his spirit. If you're going to follow Jesus, you're going to have to know what he says. Jesus said, lead me not into temptation. That implies that we're going to follow him. And when you walk with God's people, when you follow God's word, you can find out, God, should I go play for the Denver Broncos? It looks good and the money is good. God said, no. Said, yes, sir. God, should I buy this house? God says, yes. God says, no. You businessmen, I was once a half million dollars in debt. And the people say, fine, go bankrupt. God, what do you say about that? God says, son, owe no man nothing but to love him. Pay your debts. I'm talking about being a disciple. It starts at the cross, then it starts at a commitment to God and his people to be a disciple, to learn how to follow him. And then from that, the Bible says, when the Holy Spirit comes, you'll be a witness. And when you're filled with God's spirit, you'll go out, and there'll be a learning center, and there'll be giving, and there'll be serving, and there'll be loving. But it's not you the cross, discipleship, the Holy Spirit. God is looking for people. He said his eyes run to and fro throughout the earth looking for a man whose heart is completely his. And he will show himself strong in that man on behalf of the people. And so, folks, I appreciate it. I honor those who are here with me. 
the Athletes in Action Association, and all of the people. But as I said in the offset, I wish I could hide. Because I don't want to be in the way. I don't want to be even a shadow in the way of the light of Christ shining on this dark world. And so I thank you so much. I appreciate it. But to Jesus Christ, be all of the glory and the honor and the praise and the dominion and the power and everything else be to his name and to his name alone. Amen. Thank you so much.